Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and it's time for week 8 in season 7 of the GBA where uh, your Utah Jasmine will be taking on the San Francisco Arcaniners coached by Septile MC, also known as George and we have actually battled him before so uh, not all newcomers for uh, for me at least in this league but having battled him before we know what a masterful battler he is um, really good at assessing unconventional win conditions and uh, executing on those win conditions as well. Um, even when it seems like the battle is lost, he always seems to, to squeak it out. So, with that being said, we have some interesting things that we're going to bring, be bringing this week. But if you need a refresher on his team, it's there on the side. And of course, if you don't want to listen to this team builder, look in the description. I have a little link to jump right into the battle for you. For his team, you can see it there. Very threatening. Overall, much faster than my team. Um, so Swallow, I have that. That also feeds all of his team. But he has several very viable Scarfers that he could be using. Um, and then also his Z user, which is the Mew, uh, that has a variety of ways to set up. And he even has extreme speed and fake out from Yin Shao or Entei. So lots of things to prepare for here. Um, also, very unfortunately, his team is kind of like when we went against Envy, he could bring a lot of different combinations here and do very well. So um, we just prepare for as many threats as we can and kind of go from there. You'll see that I'm finally bringing the, the oh so delectable Boom Burst Swallow. Um, 164 speed is just enough to outspeed Superior. I thought about bringing it Scarfed, um, but the damage output was just really middling. With choice specs, I can two hit KO every single thing, everything on his team bar the Registeel. Um, and then I have several other things for Registeel. But uh, this will be nice for cleaning or just for punching holes early game. Um, I don't see myself leading with it, but I will put it in the lead position just to make him think that I might lead with it. Because then I can just U-turn out he won't know that I'm specs until later on. Uh, the extra bulk there, too, also helps me live an extreme speed from Entei, especially if it's banded. So that's nice. The next Pokemon is Zapdos. Going very defensive, you'll notice that the ability is static. It will be my dedicated switch in to the Mian Shao. To a lesser extent, the Entei and the Drapion and the Registeel as well. I can also switch in on Garchomp or a physically based Mew. But they also get so many coverage options. Zapdos is going to be used more as a pivot. Um, and it has enough speed to outspeed a max speed. Togekiss. So either he'll bring Scarf and he can outspeed me, or he won't have Scarf and I won't have to worry about it. But, um, yeah, Togekiss is going to be kind of a pain if he starts flinching things, so I have a lot of things equipped that can outspeed it. And of course, it's nice to resist Air Slash. He might not even bring the Togekiss because I have electric types, but he only has one ground type, so I'm going to be bringing my electric types anyways. Um, I do actually have a Hidden Power Eye Zapdos from one of the events long ago, and I've finally been able to max out the IVs on it. So, excellently. Unfortunately, I only have Bold, which is why I went with this spread. I would have really liked to bring Timid, but I just don't have a Zapdos that's Timid with Hidden Power Ice. So, um, I can't do that. The next Pokemon is Lantern. Uh, Lantern will be packing the Assault Vest with just enough speed. Um, Lantern has enough speed for a max speed modest Togekiss, I believe. No, I'm sorry, for an uninvested Togekiss. There we go, that's what my notes say here. So Lantern can outspeed an uninvested Togekiss, uh, which also allows him to catch things like Registeel. Um, uh, that's enough speed for uninvested Suicune. So we, we're we trying to catch as many things as possible there, I believe. Uh, just max special attack. Um, I think I'll get opportunities to Volt Switch around a lot here because his only ground type is Garchomp. And... Garchomp, if he has it available, it can come in on Lantern and Zapdos pretty easily. So that's why they both have Ice Moves to hit him on the switch. Uh, Lantern also gets the free Scald off there as well. Um, but Lantern is nice because if he brings Togekiss, Raikou, Suicune, to a lesser extent the Miss Magius, Lantern blocks all of them very well. Um, I don't want any one, I don't want any dedicated checks this week, basically. I want Pokemon that, cut, that can kind of come in on several different threats. That'll give me the leeway too to switch up what I'm switching in. And that will stop me from being predictable during the battle. I really hope he brings a Scarf Raikou. Wow, Raikou. 
Don't know what that means. Raikou, I hope he brings a Scarf Raikou because Lantern would love to switch in on Scarf Raikou all day. He probably won't bring it because of that, but I like that. Same thing with Scarf Togekiss, although that could always choice Scarf uh, Switch, or Trick rather, that over to my Lantern. I don't really want to deal with that. Now the final three Pokemon, we finally get to some more more wing condition type Pokemon with my Breloom. But first we have Hippowdon, just another dedicated check to, again, Garchomp, Registeel, Mianxiao, Entei, Drapion that doesn't have Aqua Tail. Um, and I can set up my Stealth Rocks. With Stealth Rocks up, Swallow, those two hit KOs turn a lot of them into one hit KOs, which is really nice. So Stealth Rocks are relatively important in this match. And depending on what he brings, like if he brings Raikou and Mianxiao, he might be swapping around a lot. Whereas if he brings more bulk like Mew, Garchomp, Togekiss, um, and Suicune, he probably won't be sitting around as often. Uh, now that being said, I did not put Sandstream on this Apaldon because he could bring Sandvale Garchomp. And why make him harder to hit than he already is? So that's just in case. I don't need him taking advantage of my abilities. We have enough speed there in order to um, outspeed the uh, an, uh, an, a minimum speed Registeel. And that's just in case I need to Earthquake him before he gets his rocks up or something like that. Um, Hippowdon can also come in on Raikou, but he'll probably have Hidden Power Ice. I'm assuming that's pretty standard on Raikou. Uh, but otherwise, Raikou can't really hurt Hippowdon too badly. The Breloom is my main win condition for this battle. So I basically need to whittle down everything here to put it in range of my Swallow or my Breloom. Breloom can set up a substitute against Registeel. Suicune without Ice Beam, it can set it up against the, um, the Miss Magius, depending on if it's a more support Miss Magius. Uh, I have enough speed on Breloom to always... Um, outrun the Togekiss as well. Uh, my, rather, I can always outrun a modest max speed Togekiss with my Jolly Breloom, then just the rest into my, my HP for a slightly, a tiny, tiny bit beefier subs. Um, you might be wondering why I'm going with Substitute Swords Dance, Mock Punch, and Bullet Seed, because after a Swords Dance, that combination can one hit KO or two hit KO his entire team. So uh, this includes the Togekiss, which notably resists both of those stab moves, but after a Swords Dance, Life Orb, Technician Boost, and Bullet Seed, I only need a total of five hits, all being relatively average rolls to two KO and max HP. Um, Togekiss, so he'd come in, he'd break my substitute. I'm assuming, I hit him as he break as he uh, as he comes in, and then I hit him again as he breaks it, and then Togekiss is down. So I don't have to deal with that. Uh, Mock Punch is also nice, just because things like the Mianxiao Superior and the Raikou can be very annoying. Um, and for my team, I don't really, I, I think he's going to bring the Mew, but I don't think he's going to bring an offensive Mew. I'm much more likely to see him bringing some type of bulky, um, offensive, uh, office, office, offensively checking type Mew. So I don't think he's going to bring like Swords Dance or Nasty Plot Mew or anything like that. I think we're much more likely to see Baton Pass on Mew and Togekiss, um, try to get into the Superior to kind of wall break or U-turn or Volt Switch from Raikou or Mianxiao. And then maybe have something like Entei in the background for wall breaking with Registeel to set up rocks. And maybe a Scarf Guard Chomp or something like that. Uh, really, the more Scarfers he runs against me, the easier it makes my life. I'm hoping that he brings more Scarfers, and that's why I have so many bulky things this week. Because if he has all those Scarfers, I'll just be able to switch in and handle it, hopefully. Which brings us to the last Pokemon, if he decides to bring Setup. So he could bring... Nasty Plot or Swords Dance or Bulk Up Mew, Swords Dance Garchomp, uh, Nasty Plot Togekiss, Calm Mind Raikou, Calm Mind Suicune, Superior gets plus two from the contrary boost. He could bring a Swords Dance Drapion or a Calm Mind Miss Magius. I need something to haze those things away, and that is my goal bat. I also have Super Fang there because I don't want Registeel to be able to always switch in for free. If he's coming in, he's losing half his health. That's how that's going to work. Um, and then the Brave Bird is just there because I can. I feel like Superior's coming, and so I want a solid check to that. Even if he gets up to plus four Hidden Power Ice, not going to do half to my Golbat. I have just enough speed there to outspeed Uninvested, um, Uninvested, uh, Registeel, excuse me. And that also allows me, of course, to outspeed, uh, if he goes Unin- I'm sorry, 
There we go. If he goes uninvested Suicune, or if he tries to speed creep me with Suicune, I cannot speed that. Registeel I'll always outspeed, which is nice, because I can haze up or roost on that if for some reason he tries bringing a curse one. Um, so we'll have that option too. The um, haze is really just a last resort. I have a relatively fast haze user against his team if he's trying to set up. I can at least click that haze. But having Golbat does make Raikou significantly more threatening, so I want to be able to bring either my Hippaladon or my um, Lantern in on either one of those threats, so I don't want to be... I don't want to have a Pokemon on my team that's a liability. I want everyone to have a good role and for everyone to be able to do what they need to do on the team. So that's the team. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching the Team Builder, and we're going to head right into the battle now. Alrighty, guys. So if you took a moment to watch the Team Builder, thank you so much. Uh, if you didn't, just a quick rundown here. I do have my sub SD Breloom, Specially Defensive Golbat, Physically Defensive Hippowdon, and the AV Lantern alongside Choice Specs, Swallow, and a defensive Speedy Zapdos. So, um, or rather just a bulky Zapdos, rather. Uh, seeing George's team really kind of threw me off. He didn't bring what I expected him to. I did expect Mew, Registeel, and Garchomp, but I had pegged him to bring almost all the other Pokemon that he had against me before he brought the, um, the, the for example, the Mismagius and the Suicune. They just didn't seem like they had great matchups against me. Um, but that's okay. I prepped for them just in case, so I didn't feel too thrown off by that. His team structure did throw me off as far as knowing what to expect from the Mew. Didn't really know what to expect there, so. In keeping with the original game plan, lead off with Zapdos, and then kind of go from there. Uh, again, with Zapdos again, I can Hidden Power Ice, Garchomp if he leads with that, or I can just go straight for Volt Switch to get off damage and to kind of scout to see what items things have or that type of thing. Uh, so he's going to issue his challenge, and he starts off with his Miss Magius, which I was like, awesome. If he's offensive, I'll know from the damage. If he's defensive, I'll know from the damage or maybe leftovers or something like that. Uh, he might drop Toxic here, not really sure. He goes straight for Power Gem, and this damage is like, ah, okay. So he's max special attack, maybe even expert belted. I'm not specially defensive Zapto, so it's hard for me to tell from the damage. Uh, I do go straight out into Lantern here to see if he's maybe choice locked into a power gem. If he isn't, which he is not, he actually goes straight for energy ball. Then I can go, okay, maybe he has an expert belt. Uh, cause he's doing too much damage for him not to have some type of damage boosting item. Unfortunately, he gets a special defense drop there as I go for Scald. I went for Scald on the chance that he swapped in his Garchomp cause the Thunderbolt was just too obvious. Uh, and Scald could have snagged a burn on the Garchomp as well. Um, but since he's probably going to go for Energy Ball again, I go out into Golbat. If he went for Power Gym, predicting my Zapdos to come in to resist it, then Golbat could take that Power Gym as well. And being specially defensive, Golbat can even take a couple of Shadow Balls. Uh, so, all all good or just great coverage there. I just go straight. I was, I know in the Team Builder I said I want to click uh, Brave Bird against the Superior. I click it against Miss Magius, even though I knew he could switch in Registeel and set up his rocks. I just, I really wanted to knock out the Miss Magius, and I didn't want to give him a chance to set up a Nasty Pot or something like that if he had it. Um, so here we do use Super Fang to shave off the HP from the Registeel as he sets up his rocks. I could have gone straight into my Hippowdon on his rocks, but if he has a Shookaberry, for example, because we don't see an item there, I can KO him through the Shookaberry unless he's like max defense or something weird like that. Um, so I bring in Hippowdon here, now I can get on my own rocks, which is nice, as he goes for Thunder Wave, so that does work out pretty well. That way, at least, my Golbat isn't paralyzed. I also could have gone into Lantern, but why take the excess switch in on the Stealth Rocks there? Um, he does switch back out into Miss Magius. I could have gone for Earthquake there, but I wanted to get up my rocks, and I figured if Miss Magius is coming back in, now will be the time. Uh, and I could also go for a Ice Fang to take out the Miss Magius if he lets me. But no reason to take damage from Energy Ball or even from the... Um... And of course, I can always switch Golbat back in on Miss Magius as well. Even with the Rocks up, I can still take those hits relatively well. Uh, so last time I went straight for Brave Bird and he brought in Registeel. 
And this time I go straight for Brave Bird thinking he'll probably just want to get as much damage as he can in on me. I also could have roosted right there, but that wouldn't have accomplished much outside of keeping me more healthy. Uh, but since he doesn't have a life orb, that kind of would have been a little, uh, a little more pointless. But Golbat nicely does pick up a KO here, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you don't see Golbat take out Miss Magius every day for sure. He brings in the Suicune and hey, if he wants to try setting up in front of Golbat, that's fine. I'm going to roost up here and then haze him away. Super fang that HP, all that good stuff. So I'm not going to be swapping out here. And he just goes straight for Ice Beam, which is good a good play on his part because I definitely was not going to let him set up. Uh, Golbat goes down. If I had saved Golbat, that might have not bitten me in the butt later. But we do go out into Lantern here because why not? Uh, the switch into Garchomp is too easy here. And last time I went for Scald, so this time I went straight for Ice Beam. Expecting Garchomp to want to come in. Uh, there was just no reason to make that middle ground play there when Suicune couldn't touch me anyways. Um, so Ice Beam nails Garchomp on switching and Garchomp goes down immediately. I was really expecting a Yachi Berry, so he might have been Scarfed or something, but thank you Lantern for making Garchomp so much easier to deal with. Uh, unfortunately, that gives him a free switch into Mew, and um, not knowing what the Mew is going to do, I just went ahead and clicked Thunderbolt as he sets up Calm Mind. And this is the point in which I was like, oh, it's a Calm Mind Mew. Well, depending on his coverage or if he just is packing a recovery move, this is going to be very, very difficult for me to deal with at this point because I really, really foresaw him bringing some other variant of Mew and bringing Calm Mind Psyshock Mew is even more interesting when I have a Clef Key and a Scrafty that I can put on it. So at this point, I was expecting him to have Calm Mind, Psyshock, Dazzling Gleam maybe, or maybe even like Hidden Power Fire or something where, or I guess Flamethrower, he wouldn't run Hidden Power Fire. And maybe a Soft or a Recovery move. But he's actually, I bring in Hippowna here just to Toxic him. And it turns out that he's Stallbreaker Mew with Taunt, Calm Mind, Roost and Psy Shock, and ah, this is gonna be the start of just a, a long, long, long stall fest. Cause he, he running just Psy Shock, he can't really touch a Paladon until he gets that plus six. But I'm not doing enough damage to him because I put all my investment into my defenses. So we're just gonna speed this up. Cause you can see how little he's doing to me. I'm trying to force him into using his Roost up. And at the same token, every time I, like here, I was like, please crit. No, no crit. Um, I, I thought at some point I would get a crit. I thought at some point uh, I would be able to guess when he's just going to try to KO me instead of taunting me or something like that. But he's just roosting and roosting and I'm just using lots and lots of earthquakes. And I, I took the time to PP max my earthquakes. So I had 16 earthquakes to work with here. So over 16 turns of this plus the couple of turns in which he taunts me as I try to go for toxic and just literally if I had brought Scrafty or Clef Key, this wouldn't have been an issue at all uh it was very ballsy of him to bring this type of set and it definitely worked I I just don't understand why he brought it against the type of team that I had because I, I just didn't think that that type of team would work now here I went into Breloom if he didn't have any speed investment I would outspeed his Mew by one point but he has some speed investment, so Breloom dies, and with that, my chances of winning the battle die. Caswello has specs, so with all the Calm Minds, I can't really do anything to it with Swellow. If I had brought regular Gut Swellow with Facade, definitely could have KO'd him at that point instead of letting Breloom die like that. But you'll notice I don't get a single critical hit. Um, you'll see me go for a couple of Ice Fangs in here, <laughs> just to, if I randomly froze him, I guess, great. But I can't do anything. This Mew, it completely puts my team over its knee. And this was an interesting way to lose this battle. I felt like um, this losing in this manner didn't really show that show the way that I prepared for it at all. And and on top of that, he actually gets a crit Psy Shock when he would have need that would have given me a few more opportunities to crit him i think he only attacked me three or four times whereas i attacked him 12 or 16 times or something like that and i just i got the flinch one and then swallow dies too so this just 
George's prep here was just so good. So now I've lost to George and MV on just like prepping with my kryptonite, I guess. Losing in that way, it was like, man, I just didn't prepare for all the possibilities. So thank you, George, for the match, man. I really learned a lot. And I and I guess George right there, too, We he definitely wanted to, to pay me back for for the previous loss that he had against me. But he definitely did. And that is a hard loss. But that is okay. We're going to move forward. Um and do and do our best to keep in, to keep in mind as far as like things that our opponents can bring. Um because I briefly considered that he could bring Call My Mew, but it just didn't make sense for him to bring that against me. But obviously it worked. Uh so I have to do a little bit better about keeping my own possibilities open as far as the types of things I think my opponents will bring because in a league like this with our where everyone is really creative and everyone has different play styles you really can't sleep on anyone and I'm not one to do that anyway so thank you guys so much for watching the battle I hope you enjoyed it and we'll look forward to the next matchup uh, against the Detroit Steel Wings in the meantime I hope you guys have a great week and I will talk to you later bye bye now oh oh thank you Skyrender for fantastic quality it looks so crispy if you're gonna lose you gotta lose in fantastic quality and style so i appreciate a sky render talk to you guys later